give you um, three projections for the future in terms of what I think the advertising agency landscape is going to look like. First of all, I think we're finally going to come up with another name for our, what we do than advertising. This, I can tell you, has been... <laughs> And of course, my slides are all screwed up because they were done on a Mac. Um, <laughs> we debate this almost every board meeting we have. And to date, nobody has come up with another name for what we do. So open to suggestions, but I'm hoping by 2020 we will have stopped calling it advertising. Secondly, I think technology will grow even more entrenched than it is now. It will be our playmate, it will be our soulmate, it will be our helpmate but it will be an entrenched part of what we do. And I think it's going to be really important for us to understand how it's being used in everyday life from the minute you turn two and can walk up to a television screen and go like this to the time that you get into our business. And we need to find a way to harness that. In 1984, Apple broke the mold in advertising. I don't think we have yet figured out how to break the mold in advertising in this day and age. And I challenge the industry to figure that out. Although Nike Fuel Band comes pretty close, but it's still not advertising. My last point in terms of what the industry is gonna look like by 2020, right now, I don't think most people realize this, but only 3% of the creative directors in the United States are women. And, only a, and one of them is here. <laughs> And the reason I think this is important, and I'm very happy to see that the discussion is becoming much more open, is because when you start putting messages out in the marketplace that have, become, have come through a woman's lens, they're going to look very different than the male-dominated communications that we have out there today. So I think this is a really important part of the discussion that we have as an industry. So getting ready for 2020 and taking those things into mind, how, what do we need to do to get prepared? First of all, I think we have to become even more collaborative. And two of the things I already talked about with regard to the digital generation and with regard to women, both of those um, uh, communities are very collaborative. So if we as agencies don't embrace that collaborative nature of the people that we're trying to bring in, then we're going to fail. So being more open and figuring out other ways to collaborate, that's imperative. We also have to attract more digital natives, and there's a lot of debate as to how you define a digital native, because now we're saying that we have digital natives in the agencies. But I don't think that it's necessarily about an age group as much as I think it is about a mentality and about looking across lots of disciplines for digital natives. So that includes data and analytics. That includes art historians who also happen to be digital natives. Our current talent pool is important, and making sure that we find a way to keep the women, keep the, the um, diverse people that we are bringing into the industry. Because what's happening right now, if you, and, you and you talk to the digital natives, and it's funny, the Gen, gen Flux, the way I describe them is they're, genera they're the slash generation. If you had asked me when I was their age what I did for a living, I would have said, I'm an account person at an ad agency. But if you talk to them, they'll say, I'm an account person at an ad agency, I write a fashion blog in the evenings, and I'm a DJ on the weekends. And that usually doesn't stop with just three. That's how they define themselves. So if we're going to keep the current talent pool and the people that we hope to bring into the industry, we have to provide them that slash opportunity. They don't look at a career the same way we do. They look at a career as a collection of experiences. And if we don't give that to them, then we're going to fail. And we will not win the talent war. So what is the 4As doing? Um, when I got to the 4As five years ago, that would have been the word I used to describe it. We had become irrelevant. We had become staid. We had become old. We had become stodgy. We didn't have our digital chops in order. And we really weren't prepared for 2008, let alone 2020. So one of the first things we had to do was devote our energies to start thinking like 2020. And we started doing that five years ago. We've devoted our energies to making sure that we can be relevant to our members, that we are talking about the things that they want us to talk about, and that we are focusing our energies in the right direction. 
So building up the forays, the very first thing we had to do, I, I had a very fateful meeting with the other Bob Greenberg and a few of the other leaders of the digital agencies who sat me down and said to me, you have one year. And if you don't get the digital part of this industry represented and represented well, we're going off to start our own thing. All those digital agencies are still members of the forays, I'm happy to say, and it's now five years later. But we did that by bringing in new talent. Somebody had said there's only two ways, it was Rashad, only two ways, either change the mind of the current talent or bring in new talent. We had to do both. Because there's a lot of institutional knowledge at a 100-year-old organization that you don't want to lose. But you have to point people in the direction of where you're headed. And, if, and they can choose to stay with you or they can leave. And fortunately, as people left, we were able to bring in the right people to help us build for the future. That should say attain. We have to aim for attaining a leadership position, and we consider that an ongoing process. Uh, one of the things that people, it would be very easy, given that people are telling us now all the time that you've done a remarkable job of changing your organization. We have. But I don't think we can stop there. I think we have to constantly change, and I think that's part of the way of doing business for all of us in this room. You can never stop changing. And I know that's something that is, was beaten into my head by Rashad when we had him come in and give us his point of view in terms of what we needed to be doing. And we continue to have those conversations with people both inside the industry and outside the industry because we can get very myopic in our own point of view inside this industry. And as I said, always looking forward, because if, you, if you're not looking forward and you're not paying attention to the trends, which is why I applaud this project of 2020, then you're going to be looking backward and trying to learn from history, and that's not necessarily a good thing for us right now. So with that, I will end my speech. Thank you.